Hello, this is Carl Freund again with Cambrian AI Research. Thank you for joining us. A very special guest for you today, Jonathan Ross, founder and CEO of Grok, a company that has a, a very unique architecture, one that I frankly sometimes don't think I fully grok. So Jonathan, welcome aboard. Well, thank you, thanks for having me. My pleasure, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I've seen your presentations before and every time I get into your architecture and I've read the Lindley report and I'm like, I'm not sure I grok it. Um, so maybe you can you can help us all understand what you're doing. And before we get into the technology, I always ask uh, my participants here, my my uh, wonderful friends and neighbors and family members, just tell us what your vision is. What's your vision for AI, and how do you how do you see Grok fulfilling that vision? Sure. So I think everyone knows that AI and machine learning are going to become very important technologies. They're going to underpin a lot of what we're doing. Uh, they already do actually. And so the primary limiter for most of these applications is compute. And so our goal and what we're trying to do is we're trying to make AI free and not free as in it doesn't cost anything, but free as in we provide so much compute per dollar that it might as well be free. That's a powerful vision. That's um, not, not the world we currently live in. How do you get there? So um, first of all, you do have to develop an architecture that is suited for the problem. And uh, you need to give up a lot of the assumptions that you're used to. Hmm, interesting, interesting. So I notice in your architecture, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, very, very fast. Um, and seems to be tailored for both for inference, although you have floating point for support, actually pretty impressive floating point performance. What's your target? Are you gonna go at just after inference and if somebody wants to do some distributed training, fine, or why don't you talk about what's, how you're gonna approach the market? So we actually have Lighthouse customers that do inference and that do training. And if you think about it, training and inference aren't all that different from a technical point of view. They're very different from a business point of view. Technically, many inference models actually have training operations in them, uh, and they're very similar in a lot of ways. And of course, uh, training holds as a subset inference, right? Now, when it comes to actually deploying, inference is harder. Inference is real time. You can't throw money at the problem because it scales. And for example, with TPU1, uh, we already had models that were trained but it was unaffordable to deploy them at scale for inference. So we targeted inference first, knowing that was gonna be the big problem that people would have models that they wanted to deploy, but you have to be able to do both. If you can only do one, it's very difficult for people to deploy your hardware. Hmm. Interesting. So as, as you, that's interesting, you, you were able to train something, but you economically, you couldn't afford to use it. Uh, do you see that happening as models get really large? I mean, if, you look at GPT-3, you know, not many people will ever afford to train a model larger than GPT-3 unless we find ways to reduce the problem size. Well, actually not many people can afford to train GPT-3, right? Yeah, like, like maybe one company. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, that group, their focus is on training a model and training it once, right? And they want to train the last model ever trained, so to speak right? Yeah. Whereas a lot of other folks are looking at this as a commercial endeavor and they want to actually be able to deploy what they have trained. Now, uh, GPT-3 is powerful at what it does. It's more powerful than other models. And that's a perfect example because people can't afford to deploy GPT-3. And even if they could afford it, the latency is still too high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've, I've heard that. A lot of people bemoan the fact that it's not freely available so that uh, the... Uh, Development of it is, is within within the walls of open AI, which is kind of ironic given the name of the organization is open AI. Maybe I'll have them on for a conversation about that, but uh, I doubt it. Um, so tell me about the experience some of your, your, your prospective clients are having with your platform. What are they learning? Uh, what, what do they like the best? Yeah, so um, there are two Lighthouse customers that are worth zeroing in on. Um, can't say their names, but one of them's in autonomous vehicles and one of them is um, in FinTech. And what's interesting is the AV company, the autonomous vehicle company is using us for inference. The FinTech is using us for training. The AV company cares about energy. The FinTech company cares about total power. 
the um, fintech company cares about how many GPUs they can displace with a single one of our chips, whereas the fintech company cares about how much they can scale up. So one of the unique things uh, in safety critical systems, having a deterministic uh, chip actually helps significantly, right? You can guarantee that you'll get an answer in a certain amount of time. In uh, fintech, as they scale up, that's actually helped them scale their problems more linearly than they've ever been able to do on these large GPU clusters. And so legacy solutions like GPUs, um, the real limit is as you put more of them together, you're not able to solve these problems and you're gonna see other you know, models like GPT-3 coming out. Some of them are gonna be larger. And if you can't scale, you're not gonna be able to deploy these things. Yeah, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be the challenge. Um, operating at scale is, is where it's at right now. Uh, but when you start talking about edge, uh, we typically think of low power devices, uh, smaller, more affordable devices. Do you see yourself branching out and having multiple SKUs or do you see just having one platform and that's what you're gonna focus on, those, those are the customers you're gonna, you're gonna target? Well, the short answer is we want to have as few different products as possible. It's just a fundamentally good idea when you're running a company. It's good for the um, customers as well because they don't have to uh, qualify too many different products. Mm -hmm. However, you will have to have some differentiation, right? Mm -hmm. So the ideal, of course, is you build a single product that's used in uh, many different, say, form factors, right? And um, where we're at is we're currently deploying a single chip in both of those different use cases. And fortunately, the performance is um, so much greater than what's available, it can actually be used in both those use cases, even though it's not tailored for either one of them. And if you think about it, that's the advantage that CPUs have had for a very long time, right? CPUs, they weren't the fastest, but you could use them for pretty much anything. And that's why they were used everywhere. So we focused a lot on generality. Interesting. So how does that manifest itself in your software stack? Because when I've, what little I do grok about your grok, um, it, it seems to put a pretty heavy burden on the compiler. Well, um, interestingly, it's actually easier to compile for. We actually spent the first six months working on our compiler. And if you recall in the ISCA paper, there's a roofline diagram that compares the matrix multiplication performance as done by our compiler and as done by our chief architect and the compiler actually won. And wow. that was the simplest thing you could run in the hardware, right? <laughs> so it's, it's already um, ahead in, in many cases, but fundamentally we designed it to be easier to compile for. And one of the ways that we did that was it's actually a single core chip and it's the largest single core chip that's ever been built. And that makes it easier to compile for. So, um... I've gone through the details, the architecture, but many of my audience perhaps, perhaps hasn't. So how do you get massive parallelism in a single core chip? Well, it actually required determinism. So if we were passing a bunch, a bunch of messages, if we had to do a bunch of synchronizations and barriers, by definition, we wouldn't be single core, we'd be multi-core, right? And so by having everything be able to run synchronously, even across multiple chips, we're actually even able to extend that single core logically beyond a single chip. So we, we don't just virtualize down, we can actually virtualize up, so to speak. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So what do, you, what do you see for the future? What, what, what are you most excited about when you think uh, two or three years out? Obviously revenue and getting customer traction, those things are, are a given, but from an industry standpoint, um, what are you looking for? So, um, in the next couple of years, what's gonna be interesting is machine learning models are gonna change. They're gonna change dramatically. Um, it used to be that machine learning models would change every two years and someone would publish their new accuracy and precision results, something that had never been achieved before. And nowadays there are companies that are using AutoML and they're getting new state-of-the-art results once a month. They don't even bother publishing them. No one knows what those models look like and the rate at which they're improving is increasing and they're using machine learning models to train the machine learning models. And so what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a whole uh, plethora of models that are just very different from the sorts of things that human beings would imagine. The sort of things that, you know, it's sort of like when AlphaGo um, started learning by playing with itself as opposed to playing with other human beings, 
it started to move dramatically ahead of humans and humans can't even comprehend what it's doing now when it plays, right? <laughs> it's gonna be like that for machine learning. And so you're gonna have to have very general hardware that's able to handle whatever comes your way. So let's go there for just a minute. Um, some people, um, I don't consider myself one of them, but some people would say that a specialized product such as yours um, will not be able to adapt as the models change so rapidly. Um, how do you how do you counter that that, that sort of thinking? Actually, some of the uh, other customers that we're working with. So we've actually, by the way, shipped uh, to three government labs, um, and we have some other folks in the pipeline. Different verticals that we're developing besides the ones that were mentioned. And in some cases, what's being done on our hardware isn't even machine learning. In fact, some of the larger cases aren't even machine learning. And we've been able to go in and do things that traditionally you needed an FPGA or um, you might have needed a GPU for and were able to do better. So it's, it's really just a fundamentally different architecture. It happens to be really, really good for machine learning, but it's more general than that. Well, that's fascinating. That's really really interesting to hear. I, I think as people struggle with uh, more and more parallel algorithms running out of gas, uh, that's, that's good news. That's good news for a lot of, a lot of people in the industry. Well, uh, I think we'll try to keep these short. So if you have any other comments you'd like to leave with our audience, uh, now would be a good time. Well, one thing is um, we're growing. So we've grown 2x in the last six months, and we're going to grow another 2x this year. So um, if you're, if you know anyone who's talented, if, if you'd like to help us um, create the future where this goes, uh, go to our website, www.grok.com, or uh, follow us on LinkedIn. Excellent. Good advice. Good advice. If I was a younger man, I'd take you up on it. All right. <laughs> All right. Jonathan, thank you so much for your time today. Interesting conversation. I look forward to doing this again with you in the, when you've got a few minutes. I do as well. All right. Great All to right. see you. Great. Thanks a lot.